Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. I'm about to read a very long chapter, and I want to make some comments up front because I'm going to make very few comments on the back end. So it starts out telling that the people will be blessed if they obey the Lord their God. Over and over, this stipulation appears in the scriptures, but following chapter 27, where some of the problems with disobedience were outlined, chapter 28 starts out with the blessings for obedience. And so the Lord says he'll establish the Jewish people as his holy people, that he'll open up the heavens for them, that he'll make them the the head and not the tail, etc. These are very, very famous promises, very precious promises. Um, You may be familiar with them, but you'll certainly be familiar with them after I read them. And then it goes back to the concept of if you do not obey the Lord your God, all these curses will come on you. So it talks about uh, uh, the sky over their heads being like bronze, the ground being like iron. In other words, um, the sky over your head, um, no, no access to the heavenly realm to commune with the Lord, but also no rain. The ground beneath you iron. It won't produce fruits and vegetables and so forth. So there's no blessing on the, on the sky or on the ground. And then it goes forward and mentions a future king. This is interesting because they were not supposed to have a king, and yet the Lord recognized that they would, in fact, have a king. It talks about the time of the kings would ultimately result in in judgment, and uh, they would be cast out of the Holy Land. So this is fascinating. Um, it's It's a prophetic chapter. It starts out with the blessings, goes to the curses, and then it goes to prophecy about the future king, and and I think it alludes to the Assyrian conquest and the Babylonian conquest uh, that Israel endured, and perhaps even the Roman conquest that cast them out of Israel for almost 2,000 years. So let's read now Deuteronomy chapter 28. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all of his commands I give you today, The Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on earth. All these blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed, and the crops of your land and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks. Your basket and your kneading trough will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction, but flee from you in seven. The Lord will send a blessing on your barns and on everything you put your hand to. The Lord your God will bless you in the land he's giving you. The Lord will establish you as his holy people, as he promised you on an oath. If you keep the commands of the Lord your God and walk in obedience to him, then all of the people on earth will see that you're called by the name of the Lord, and they will fear you. The Lord will grant you abundant prosperity in the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock, and the crops of your ground, in the land he swore to your ancestors to give you. The Lord will open up the heavens the storehouse of his bounty, to send rain on your land in season, and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but you will borrow from none. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. If you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God that I give you this day and carefully follow them, you will always be at the top and never at the bottom. Do not turn aside from any of the commands I give you today to the right or to the left, following other gods and serving them. However, if you do not obey the Lord your God and do not carefully follow all of his commands and decrees I'm giving you today, all of these curses will come on you and overtake you. You will be cursed in the city and cursed in the country. Your basket and your kneading trough will be cursed. The fruit of your womb will be cursed, and the crops of your land, and the calves of your herds, and the lambs of your flocks. You will be cursed when you come in, and cursed when you go out. The Lord will send on you curses, confusion, and rebuke 
and everything you put your hand to until you are destroyed and come to sudden ruin because of the evil you've done in forsaking him. The Lord will plague you with diseases until he has destroyed you from the land you're entering to possess. The Lord will strike you with wasting disease, with fever and inflammation, with scorching heat and drought, with blight and mildew, which will plague you until you perish. The sky over your head will be bronze. The ground beneath you will be iron. The Lord will turn the rain of your country into dust and powder. It will come down from the skies until you are destroyed. The Lord will cause you to be defeated from your enemies. You will come at them from one direction, but flee from them in seven, and you will become a thing of horror to all the kingdoms on earth. Your carcasses will be food for all of the birds and the wild animals, and there will be no one to frighten them away. The Lord will afflict you with the boils of Egypt and with tumors, festering sores, and the itch from which you cannot be cured. The Lord will afflict you with madness, blindness, and confusion of mind. At midday you will grope about like a blind person in the dark. You will be unsuccessful in everything you do. Day after day you will be oppressed and robbed with no one to rescue you. You will be pledged to be married to a woman, but another will take her and rape her. You will build a house, but you will not live in it. You will plant a vineyard, but you will not even begin to enjoy its fruit. Your ox will be slaughtered before your eyes, but you will eat none of it. Your donkey will be forcibly taken from you and will not be returned. Your sheep will be given to your enemies, and no one will rescue them. Your sons and daughters will be given to another nation, and you will wear out your eyes watching for them day after day, powerless to lift a hand. A people that you do not know will eat what your land and labor produce, and you will have nothing but cruel oppression all of your days. The sights you see will drive you mad. The Lord will afflict your knees and legs with powerful boils that cannot be cured, spreading from the soles of your feet to the top of your head. The Lord will drive you and the king you set over you to a nation unknown to you or your ancestors. There you will worship other gods, gods of wood and stone. You will become a thing of horror, a byword, and an object of ridicule among all the peoples where the Lord will drive you. You will sow much seed in the field, but you will harvest little, because locusts will devour it. You will plant vineyards and cultivate them, but you will not drink the wine or gather the grapes, because the worms will eat them. You will have olive trees throughout your country, but you will not use the oil, because the olives will drop off. You will have sons and daughters, but you will not keep them, because they will go into captivity. Swarms of locusts will take over all of your trees and the crops of your land. The foreigners who reside among you will rise above you higher and higher, but you will sink lower and lower. They will lend to you, but you will not lend to them. They will be the head, but you will be the tail. All these curses will come on you. They will pursue you and overtake you until you are destroyed because you did not obey the Lord your God and observe the commands and decrees he gave you. They will be a sign and a wonder to you and your descendants forever. Because you did not serve the Lord your God joyfully and gladly in the time of prosperity, therefore in hunger and thirst and nakedness and dire poverty, you will serve the enemies the Lord sends against you. He will put an iron yoke on your neck until he has destroyed you. The Lord will bring a nation against you from far away, from the ends of the earth, like an eagle swooping down, a nation whose language you will not understand, a fierce-looking nation without respect for the old or pity for the young. They will devour the young of your livestock and the crops of your land until you are destroyed. They will leave you no new grain, new wine, or olive oil, nor any calves of your herds or lambs of your flocks until you are ruined." They will lay siege to all the cities throughout your land until the high fortified walls in which you trust fall down. They will besiege all the cities throughout the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Because of the suffering that your enemy will inflict on you during the siege, you will eat the fruit of the womb, the flesh of the sons and daughters the Lord your God has given you. Even the most gentle 
and sensitive man among you will have no compassion on his own brother or the wife he loves or his surviving children. And he will not give to one of them any of the flesh of his children that he's eating. It will be all he has left because of the suffering your enemy will inflict on you during the siege of your cities. The most gentle and sensitive woman among you, so sensitive and gentle that she would not venture to touch the ground with the sole of her foot, will begrudge the husband she loves and her own son or daughter the afterbirth from her womb and the children she bears. For in her dire need she tends to eat them secretly because of the suffering your enemy will inflict on you during the siege of your cities. If you do not carefully follow all the words of this law, which are written in this book, and do not revere this glorious and awesome name, the Lord your God, the Lord will send fearful plagues on you and your descendants, harsh and prolonged disasters, and severe and lingering illnesses. He will bring on you all the diseases of Egypt that you dreaded, and they will cling to you. The Lord will also bring on you every kind of sickness and disaster not recorded in this book of the law until you are destroyed. You who were as numerous as the stars in the sky will be left but few in number, because you did not obey the Lord your God. Just as it pleased the Lord your God to make you prosper and increase in number, so it will please Him to ruin and destroy you. You will be uprooted from the land you are entering to possess. Then the Lord will scatter you among all nations, from one end of the earth to the other. There you will worship other gods gods of wood and stone, which neither you nor your ancestors have known. Among those nations you will find no repose, no resting place for the sole of your foot. There the Lord will give you an anxious mind, eyes weary with longing, and a despairing heart. You will live in constant suspense, filled with dread both day and night, never sure of your life. In the morning you will say, if only it were evening, and in the evening, if only it were morning. Because of the terror that will fill your hearts and the sights that your eyes will see, the Lord will send you back in ships to Egypt on a journey I said you should never make again. There you will offer yourselves for sale to your enemies as male and female slaves, but no one will even buy you. Now, this paints two pictures, one that is a delightful future filled with blessing for obedience to the Lord but another option for disobedience that is filled with a very dreadful future. And so the the blessing part, uh, the Lord promised to bless them with everything they could possibly imagine for obedience, that everything they were involved in would be delightful, that they would live in prosperity among the nations, they would be established in security, that no country could touch them. However, if they didn't obey, it was going to be very, very difficult for them. And ultimately, they were going to be cast out of the promised land and carried away into captivity. And so sadly, we know that is, in fact, what happened. But about 70 years ago, Israel was reestablished as a nation. Perhaps the end of these curses for disobedience is at hand with the reestablishment of the nation. So we want to take a few minutes today and pray for the Lord's people, Israel, that they would once again be blessed for obedience. And so, Lord, I won't make the case that Israel was cursed for disobedience, but I will ask you, Lord, to bless them with obedient hearts. May they obey the words of your mouth and the precepts of your scriptures. May they come to know their Messiah, Jesus, the Lamb of God and the Son of God. Lord, we ask that you would find a way to bless the people of Israel, that they would indeed have an open heaven over them, that they would indeed be the head and not the tail, that they would be protected among the nations and blessed in everything they put their hands to. Lord, cause those things to come into agreement with your word for them so that the blessings of Almighty God, the blessings of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob might once again rest on them in full measure. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. 
If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.